So yeah, out of every version of Minecraft that's out there, pretty much the only one that's never been speedrun before is Minecraft 3DS. And honestly, it doesn't really surprise me because this version's pretty underrated and not very well known. So that's why I decided to take on the daunting task of speedrunning Minecraft 3DS. Now this has never been done before, so I had to do a lot of extra planning and work to see if I could even pull this off. The next thing I did was I researched a seed I was going to use. I am going to be using a set seed for my first attempt at this speedrun because the spawning parameters for this version are much different from any other Minecraft version and it's just going to be the most efficient and fastest way to do this speedrun. Also, in order to get the fastest time possible in this attempt, I'm going to be using glitches in the speedrun. I may try a glitches run in the future, but this is going to be an any percent run, so I am allowed to use glitches if necessary, and I will be using glitches in the speedrun as you will see soon. This video is going to be voiceovering my speedrun clip. If you want to see the full unedited version, the link will be in the description as well as the pinned comment down below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I did, of course, was to make a new world. I put the game in survival mode, of course, and I'm doing the speedrun in normal difficulty. Then I put in the seed after that. The seed I'm going to be using is 66898262 for anyone wondering. The reason why this world's so great is because it has a stronghold right beneath spawn, a village at spawn, and two desert temples and a second village not far away. There's also a lava pool nearby that I can make the quick nether portal at as well. Once the world booted up, I got my timer ready to go, and after I made my first input and started, I started the timer. The first thing I did when I joined the world is I got wood from the villager garden, I collected the things from the blacksmith, and I went straight to the first desert temple. This desert temple gave me some necessary materials for later, including any ender pearls, which in order to get ender pearls, I'm going to have to trade with a cleric at the village, because getting ender pearls from endermen in this version is very, very slow and would take way too much time. Once I got the necessary materials there, I went straight to the other village in Desert Temple. I got all the necessary materials in that Desert Temple, including some diamonds and emeralds, which did come in handy later because I will need to make a diamond sword to defeat the Ender Dragon, of course. Right after I did that, I put some things away and I went straight to Nether. After grabbing some iron and making a flint and steel, I went straight over to the lava pool because this is where I was going to make my quick nether portal trick. I set up the blocks and the water and I had a bucket in hand and I essentially just took lava from the lava pool and I created my nether portal and I was able to enter the nether portal in about 10 minutes which in my opinion was pretty quick for my first attempt. After lighting up the nether portal and entering the nether, I referenced my coordinates that I wrote down for the nether fortress. Now unfortunately, the nether fortress isn't really that close to spawn so I did have to do some walking. But it is not too far away, so it only took about 30 seconds to 1 minute off my time that I could have saved by finding a better nether portal, but this was the most efficient way to do it. In between my walk to the nether fortress, I decided to collect some blocks because netherrack breaks very quick, and of course I needed blocks later for the end, so I figured to spend the time now to break netherrack, which doesn't take that much time, and to grab some blocks while I was at it. The next thing of course I did was to go to the nether fortress. The blaze spawner in this nether fortress is spawned in a weird way, because all I had to do was essentially dig up from the floor to basically right where the blaze spawner was. And this didn't take that long, luckily, and once I reached the blaze spawner, I essentially waited for the blazes to spawn. But here's where the issues started to begin. This blaze spawner is pretty picky, because sometimes it likes to spawn blazes and sometimes it doesn't. In my other trial runs for speedrunning Minecraft 3DS, sometimes it wouldn't spawn any at all. So I was getting pretty worried that I was going to end up spending a lot of time at the spawner trying to get blaze rods. But thankfully, a few spawned pretty much immediately and I was able to get those and I was able to get a few lingering around the fortress nearby. But just as I thought, the spawner was being stubborn again and I kind of had to linger for a few seconds. Until, of course, the blazes spawned again. I could have saved more time in the nether if the blaze spawner was more cooperative, but this is not something that's under my control, so unfortunately this is just something I have to deal with. I kept going trying to collect blaze rods until I had four. Of course, I needed five blaze rods because there was already two ender eyes in the end portal. So in order to get enough blaze powder to make the ender eyes, I needed just five rods. So once I collected four, the blaze spawner stopped spawning blazes for a bit. So I just decided to use a duplication glitch to essentially get the last blaze rod that I needed. And because the duplication glitch gave me the necessary amount of blaze rods, I then left the nether. Surprisingly enough, leaving the nether fortress was actually much harder than getting into it, because there were a few mobs outside the nether fortress waiting for me. 
and it was honestly shocking to me to see a few blazes lingering outside of the fortress so far away from the spawner. After making my way back to the portal, I collected the majority of blocks I'm going to be using for the end later. I'm going to be using a method where I climb up the side of the end crystal towers using blocks, because in my opinion that's the fastest and safest method to destroy end crystals in this version. Using the bow and arrow method will just cause Ironmen to come after me and it will just end up causing more deaths to happen and a lot more time wasted. So that's why I'm going to spend the extra time to get a few blocks and that way I can have a more efficient and more good time in the end. After getting the blocks, I went back through the nether portal back home. Once I reached home, I went back to the village where I had my base at. I then went through a couple things and I crafted a few things as well for the end, including using another duplication glitch for the diamonds. This of course is cheating in a normal survivor world, but because this is any percent, I am allowed to use glitches of course. So I crafted a full set of diamond armor, I also got a diamond sword. Now I'm really not able to get anything else for the end, such as a bow and arrow to help kill the ender dragon just because of how much time that would take. It was also around this time where I encountered my first autosave, and naturally autosaves will have to count against my time, because I really don't want to have to edit out autosaves, so unfortunately because they're natural and part of the game, I unfortunately will have to keep them in, but they don't really cost that many seconds. Like I just said, I duplicated more diamonds to get my full set of diamond armor. I also already had enough diamonds to make some more diamond tools, so I made a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. Because when I go to dig down the nether rack on the end crystal towers, I'm going to need to do it fast. And of course, a diamond pickaxe is perfect for that. I could use a water bucket and swim my way down the towers for a much better time, but that's honestly not really that safe, and going slow honestly will just cause the dragon to push me out in the void, and it will just cause me to lose more time anyway. After that, I went around and collected some items for the end. I got some wheat, which I then duplicated to make some bread. This will be my main food source for the end. And in order to make this fully clear, I am using glitches in order to get the fastest time. I may attempt a glitches run in the future, but the way Minecraft 3S works, that may not really be possible, and of course, I'm gonna have to use glitches to get the fastest time. The next thing I needed to do was of course get the ender pearls. In order to get ender pearls, I'm gonna have to trade with a villager called the cleric. The cleric has a purple cloak on, and once you trade with the cleric a certain amount of times, the final trade that it unlocks is of course ender pearls. Of course, I needed emeralds to trade to get the ender pearls, so how did I get those emeralds? Well, I had to trade with the cleric again by using its lower level trades. I was going to use the rotten flesh trade because that's easy to duplicate and get, but I realized that I didn't have enough rotten flesh and that's where a problem started kicking in. However, gold was another one of its trades, so I ended up going back to the desert temple and grabbing the gold that it had there. Now this was a mistake on my part, and I could have easily avoided this by grabbing the materials in the very beginning of the run, but of course, mistakes happen, and it didn't really cost me that much time, but of course, every minute counts in a speedrun, but there is a lot to remember when doing a speedrun as well, and because everyone's under pressure when doing a speedrun, it's not easy to remember all those things, so mistakes can happen. Luckily, this wasn't a huge mistake and it didn't ruin my run. Once I got the items all sorted out, I started trading with the cleric to get the emeralds. Of course, I obviously had to use duplication glitches for this to make it go the fastest. I traded roughly 20 emeralds, which is basically all I needed to get 4 ender pearls, which I then duplicated those to get to 16. I also needed some ender pearls later for the end, because if I'm on top of an end crystal tower, I can easily just teleport down to the ground with an ender pearl. Right after I did that, I made the ender eyes. Once I did that, I started through my inventory, and then as you can see here, I'm starting to dig down to the end portal. Now, I didn't want to make a staircase down to the stronghold because that would just take too long, so that's why I'm just digging directly above the end portal because the stronghold is right beneath the village and spawn. And if I do somehow die in the end, which I did a couple of times, I can easily go back to here without losing too many hearts, and it's just much quicker overall. After that, I went down, broke the silverfish spawner, and I placed blocks to block off any mobs that would come in, so if I die, I don't end up getting bombarded by mobs in the stronghold. The next thing I did, of course, was to add the ender eyes to the portal. And this is probably one of the most exciting parts of this entire speedrun because it's almost coming to an end. However, we're not done yet because we still have to fight the ender dragon. But I was able to reach the end in just about 31 minutes, which is honestly really fast. And I was honestly not expecting myself to reach the end in this amount of time. 
I did a quick game save and then I entered the end portal. At this point when I entered the end, my inventory was already sorted. So all I had to do was grab the nether rack that I collected in the nether earlier and started climbing up the side of the end crystal towers. Now some may say this is not really the fastest method, but honestly in my experimentation with this, it seemed like the fastest and of course most safest method in all. And that's mainly because if you use the bow and arrow method, you don't have to worry about Enderman coming after you, which of course, death after death is just going to add on time. So I'd rather spend the extra time, climb the towers, and break the crystals, rather than just dying over and over again or just risking myself. Since my first death was right after destroying the second end crystal, I just decided to respawn back at the start and go back into the end portal. It didn't take that long to go back, so I just went ahead and did it anyway. I did die a couple more times in the end, but sometimes instead of respawning, I just quit the game after a save, because I figured that would probably be much faster so I don't have to worry about sorting my inventory or collecting my stuff again. So that did actually save me quite a bit of time in the end. And now comes the super tedious and dangerous part, of course, destroying all the end crystals. At first, it seemed like it was going quite well. I kept climbing towers, I only died once, and I was able to destroy 5-6 to six ender crystals pretty quickly. But once I destroyed that 6th end crystal, things started taking a turn for the worst. Death after death, I was starting to get worried. I hit the 40 minute mark, and I did make a decent amount of progress in the end. I did destroy roughly 6 or 7 end crystals at this point, however, I still had a few left to go. I was contemplating whether I should start going after the ender dragon or not, or end up wasting my time because it's just going to end up refilling its health again. I kept trying to get end crystals, but it just kept on being a tedious task as time went on. Soon then, I finally found a frame of time where I could destroy an end crystal. So I climbed up the tower and I finally got another crystal destroyed. So what was there left to do now? Of course, kill the ender dragon. Now this was a lot easier than I actually originally expected. Even though the dragon at this point was of course really mad at me for what I've been doing, it was honestly not that hard to deal hit points on him. Me constantly just staying there inside of the portal just caused Enderman to come after me because I kept accidentally looking up trying to hit the dragon. Of course, at this point, Enderman also started becoming a problem. At this point, however, with half a heart remaining after so many Endermen storming me, I think the Minecraft 3DS gods were actually finally working in my favor. Because the amount of luck I just had in that situation was insane, and it saved me, of course, a lot of time. Of course, to deal the maximum amount to the dragon with the tools that I have, I had to hit it in the head with my diamond sword while jumping up and down to get a critical hit. This did honestly quite a bit of damage with just a single diamond sword. Soon after that, the dragon stormed in once again, but this time I thought for certain it would be over. I thought I could beat Minecraft 3DS in under 50 minutes, but that didn't end up happening and the dragon stormed away right when the health bar was almost low. Then I proceeded to get launched off and killed by a bunch of endermen. Yeah, guess the Minecraft 3DS gods don't like me anymore. All hope was not lost though. After quickly returning to the end, I was still under an hour, so I still had a chance at beating Minecraft 3DS in a half decent time. I went over to the Ender Dragon, and then this happened. Yes, okay, okay, finally. Okay, and then when the game freezes, when I enter the portal, that's when I stop the timer. And there we go, Minecraft 3DS beaten in just 51 minutes and 23 seconds. Of course, I could have done much better, and there were a lot of times in this run where I could have saved a lot of time. I could probably get around 40 minutes, or lower heck even, if I do this again. But I just wanted to do this just so I can even see if Minecraft 3DS was even speedrunnable at all. Of course, it obviously is, but I just wanted to see what time or how long it would take. And of course, it was possible, and honestly, it exceeded my expectations for how much time it would take, knowing how hard the end is in this version and how spawning parameters work. Overall, even though I didn't get the best time in the world, I still think this challenge was very fun to do, and it was definitely worth it in the end. And heck, if you guys want to try spinning Minecraft 3DS for yourself, go ahead, I would really like to see what times you guys end up getting. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It did take a while to make, so if you enjoyed it, make sure to click subscribe, ring the bell, and click the like button. And with that being said, happy speedrunning, and thanks for watching.